Number 10, Chicago and Northwestern. This is a Class 1 railroad that operated over 5,000 miles. It started in 1859. It has been chartered five days after purchasing a bankrupt Chicago, St. Paul, and Fond du Lac Railroad. It merged with Galena and Chicago Union Railroad in 1865. The Winona St. Peter Railroad was added in 1867. Wow, that's a lot of mergers. The Union Pacific needs more than six heritage units. My mind has been blown! This railroad had transported a lot of crops and has a passenger train called the 400. I had first heard about this railroad when I saw a commuter train at the Illinois Railway Museum. It was very similar to the Metra. Did you know that this was the only railroad that had gotten the Crandall locomotives? Yeah, they have never gotten the Metra paint schemes. In 1984, Metra had bought out the commuter trains. It had nothing but freight until it merged with the Union Pacific in 1995. This railroad was pretty old, but do you want to know what's even older? Number 9. The Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. The Baltimore and Ohio Railroad was known for being the first railroad ever built in America. Construction started on July 4, 1828. Hey, that's Independence Day! Their first steam locomotive was called the Tom Thumb. It was built by Peter Cooper, and then he used it to race a horse and then lost. As the years went by, they have gotten bigger steam locomotives. The biggest one was the EM-1. In case if you want to know why it wasn't on my list of extinct steam engines, I just wanted to put more engines that Chris and Jim didn't use. It started when the city of Baltimore had some financial issues, and a railroad was the solution. And their plan worked well. It opened on May 24, 1830. A her horse pulled the first train. During that time, the line was only 26 miles long. This railroad has extended as the years went by. It went through states such as Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, obviously, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland. In the end, it had a merger, which became the CSX in 1987. Number 8. The Chesapeake and Ohio Railway when I was younger, I used to call it the Cheapskate and Ohio. It started in 1868 in Virginia. It had crossed the Allegheny Mountains by 1869. It had went to states such as Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, which is in the name, Kentucky, West Virginia, Maryland, and Canada, which is a country. CNO was also known for doing a good job at handling coal. When diesels were replacing steam, the CNO was worried that this was going to lead to a financial loss because they had a ton of coal and the oil fields were so far away. This had led to the M1 turbine, which failed. But the switch to diesels didn't turn out so bad as the railroad thought it would. In 1973, it became the Chessie system, which later on became the CSX in 1982. Number 7, The Norfolk and Western. 
Kicking off at number 7 is the last railroad to switch to diesels. It was formed by more than 200 mergers. It had started operating in 1870. Their tracks were located in Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Maryland, North Carolina. This railroad was also known for making its own steam locomotives, such as the Y6Bs or the Class A's and that streamlined J locomotive. They also had a passenger train that traveled from Cincinnati to Norfolk or Columbus to Norfolk. Just like the CNO, the Norfolk and Western was known for hauling coal. And when the diesels were invented, they built a coal-fired steam turbine, which didn't learn from the mistakes of the M1. The switch to diesels also wasn't so bad, but I have always known this railway for the steam engines. In 1980, it teamed up with the Southern Railway and became Norfolk Southern in 1982. Number 6. The New York Central This is the most common roads name I have collected in O-Gage. If I was gonna make a layout with one road name, it will have to be New York Central. So far, I have collected a New York Central Legacy Hudson with whistle steam and water scoop spray, a New York Central Dreyfus Hudson, a New York Central K-Line Hudson which broke so I sold it, a New York Central S2 Electric, a New York Central GP30, and you all know I have the Vision Line Niagara. Oh. And I also want a Vision Line Hudson so badly. It was founded in 1853 by a man named Cornelius Vanderbilt. They had a streamlined steam locomotive named after him. It was originally called the Mohawk and Hudson Railroad until it changed its name to Alabandini and Schenectady Railroad, and then after that it became the New York Central. It started running between Alabany and Buffalo, and then it expanded to states such as New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and even Canada. The eastern side of the railway had switched to electrics because a steam locomotive had went through the tunnel under the New York City and sprayed so much smoke that it was hard for the driver to see and caused an accident. It was tragic. City had banned steam locomotives before diesels were invented. Some passenger trains, like the 20th Century Limited, would have to uncouple a steam locomotive and couple an electric up on the front, halfway through the route. This railroad was the first railroad in America to have streamlined steam locomotives. This railroad also has one of the best passenger trains, the 20th Century Limited, as well as my favorite steam locomotive, the Hudson. New York Central has also kept the passenger trains fast with the water scoop. You know, because their trains don't have to step for water. But they do have to slow it down. It could only go 40 miles per hour with a 12-wheel tender, but 80 miles per hour with a centipede tender. So they decided to use this tender more often. They painted it for the Dreyfus Hudson 
I can't say the same for the Empire State Express Streamlined Hudson. The Empire State Express Streamlined Hudson looks a lot better with its old tender. The railroad lasted for 115 years and came to an end in 1968. Number 5 The Pennsylvania Railroad I have also collected a lot of PRR engines back when I was running HO scale trains. I have gotten an M1B, a T1 duplex, a K4, and a Decapod, but I had switched to O gauge. Now I have a four. Yeah, I would have had five if my B6 didn't break. It started in 1846. Its first line was in, you guessed it, the state of Pennsylvania. That first line traveled between Harrisburg and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Like all railroads, it expanded over the years, and wow, that's a lot of tracks in that little area. I have to say, the post-war Pensy steam does have a very unique look. For the Streamliners, they hired Raymond Lowy to design them. They did have a lot of passenger trains, such as the Broadway Limited, which travels from New York to Chicago. I have already explained why the New York Central switched to electrics on their northeast side of the line. They did the same for the Pennsylvania. So the Pennsylvania Railroad does have a lot of electric locomotives. My favorite's the GG1. This railroad is also home to the famous Horseshoe Curve, which is very busy. It's a steep incline and surrounded by mountains. This curve is now a landmark. This railroad is also a business rivalry to the New York Central. This road name has come to an end in 1968. You know, these railroads have been close together, and why doesn't anybody think it's a good idea for these two railroads to, you know, emerge? Oh, that's why. Number 4. The Southern Pacific Railroad. Feels good to finally be on the western side of the country again. I have collected three O-Gage Southern... Do you have to tell us your entire train collection for everyone? Sorry. It was founded in 1865 as a land-holding company. It went to states such as Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Missouri. One thing that could lead to the passenger trains being so good was the that the railway was surrounded by mountains. That would lead to a more scenic route with a lot of mountains. I actually love the high bridges. This railroad also has a lot of paint schemes. Such as the Daylight, Golden State, Black Widow, Bloody Nose, Halloween, and Popsicle. And let's not forget about that failed attempt to emerge with the Santa Fe. In the end, it emerged with the Union Pacific in 1998. 